Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and my name is Manish Tiwari. So let's start with scenario based given its interview questions which are for experienced candidate like those who are working already with the given system and the cloud system as well. So without any further delay, let's start with the first interview questions and these questions are specifically ready for you, which even I used to ask in the interview and if you are appearing for the interview, you will come across uh, these questions. So our first question is, you are tasked with deploying a stateful application on Kubernetes. How do you ensure data persistence and high availability? So if you read about this question, you will see that we are talking about data persistence. That means obviously we are talking about a stateful sets, correct? So if you will see the answer as well, to ensure data persistence, I would utilize Kubernetes stateful sets, correct? Then what is the property of stateful sets? It provides you a stable network identity and that is unique as well. Also, it provides you the every pod which comes in that comes in order, correct? So whenever you do upgrade or any kind of activity, all the transmission of the pods or the deployment of pods happen in a particular order. So this helps you to do a smooth and uh, I will say the upgrade in a good way, correct? So that your uh, application will not face any kind of latency. Also to store any kind of data, you can use this persistent volume claim. So with the help of PVC, mounting it to each stateful port, you can ensure data persistence, even if a port restarts or moves to another node, correct? So that way you can set the the stateful application on your Kubernetes system and to make it highly available, you can deploy multiple replica of a stateful set across different nodes to achieve high availability. So that way you can answer, you can read about this answer as well, which is, uh, which is on the screen itself. Let's move towards the second question. So you need to scale a Kubernetes deployment based on CPU utilization. So the requirement is that Whatever deployment you are doing, your deployment should scale up or scale down based on the CPU utilization. Like just say, uh, suppose that I'm saying that whenever CPU utilization goes above 70%, the number of ports should get increased. And whenever the number uh, CPU utilization is less than 40%, it should scale down as well. So how can you do that? So to do that, you can implement HPA, Horizontal Port Scaler, which is the property in a Kubernetes. So that feature you can enable. It's the feature which automatically adjusts the number of replica pod in deployment based on object CPU utilization. So that target CPU utilization, you need to put in your deployment file. So you will put target CPU utilization threshold and minimum or maximum number of replica count. After that, HPA will dynamically scale down the deployment and scale up the deployment based on the demand. So that way you can answer this second question. Let's move towards the third question. You are tasked with deploying a microservice architecture on K8, Kubernetes, correct? How do you manage inter-service communication? So your third question is related to the service, which is the component of your Kubernetes, correct? So if you are aware about the service, you know that there are four types of services, your cluster IP, your external name, your load balancer, correct? And so on. So that feature you will use here. If you see the answer, I would use Kubernetes built-in service discovery and networking features such as Kubernetes services and DNS resolution. When we talk about Kubernetes services, we are obviously talking about those four types of services. And here if you see in the question, it's, it's asking for inter-service communication. That means we are talking about the service type of cluster IP. So you, each microservice would be deployed as a separate Kubernetes deployment or a stateful set. Correct? Whatever uh, you prefer, you can deploy your application. Like if you are looking for the data persistence, as we talked in the first question, you can deploy it as a stateful set. Or if you want it uh, without any data persistence, you can deploy it as a deployment file. With a corresponding service to expose it internally. To expose it internally, you will use the service type, your cluster IP, correct? Then services can then communicate with each other using DNS name or environment variables allowing for seamless inter-service communication within the cluster. Let's move towards the fourth question. You need to deploy a Kubernetes cluster across multiple cloud providers for redundancy. When we are talking about multiple cloud providers, we are talking about AWS, GCP, or any different cloud, whenever, uh, whatever you source, correct? Like your Azure or Oracle, any cloud, if you want. So to answer this question, 
how will you implement this? I would implement a multi-cloud Kubernetes strategy using tools like Kubernetes Federation or multi-cluster management platform. With the help of this deployment, what you will configure? You will configure Federation or cluster uh, cross-cluster communication. With the help of that, we can achieve redundancy and you can even avoid vendor locking, correct? And network robust or uh, sorry robust networking you can implement and even you can implement this load balancing solutions to ensure seamless communication between clusters like you have cluster a you have cluster b into the different uh, clouds so with the help of load balancing uh, concepts and your uh, networking concept you can ensure a smooth communication between these different kubernetes cluster which is available in the different cloud provider as well now our fifth question is related to the troubleshooting. So your Kubernetes pod is failing to start and you have to debug it. How will you do? So the first answer, I would check the pods log using the kubectl log command. So you know kubectl log command will give you the complete detail about the logs. It's live log. Even you can uh, use this watch command to see the live logs, whatever the logs are generating, correct? And with the help of that, you can check for any error message which is popping in. Also, you can do kubectl describe for the pod. You will see all the events which are happening. You can do the kubectl get events. You can check for the resources which are allocated for your pods, whether the enough number of resources are available on to that particular node on which your pod has been scheduled or not. And the, with all these commands, you can check for any uh, issues which are appearing uh, to schedule your pod or even if your image is not being pulled in, correct? So there might be permission related issues as well. So you can check on those issues as well. So you can use tools like kubectl exec to log in into the container and check whatever uh, issues are there, whether it's the issue with the images, whether it's the issue with some other resources that you can check. Let's move towards the sixth question. You are deploying a Kubernetes application that requires secret management. How do you securely manage sensitive information? So this question is related to your Kubernetes secret, which is base 64 encoded. And that is used for your TLS certificate, like what if you have to store any certificate related data that you can store, if you have to store any to token related data that you can uh, store, correct? Or password related thing. So you will see the answer as well. I would use Kubernetes secret. That is a built-in resource for storing sensitive information such as passwords, API tokens, or TLS certificate. Secrets can be created manually or generated programmatically and they are stored encrypted at rest within the Kubernetes cluster. How you will ensure the security of this uh, secret which you are storing in Kubernetes secret? For that, you can use the RBAC, that is role-based access control to ensure only authorized users or application can access this Kubernetes secret. So this way you can store sensitive information and in Kubernetes and you can Secure them with the help of Farback. Let's move towards the seventh question. You are tasked with updating a Kubernetes deployment within, sorry, without downtime. So how will you ensure zero downtime kind of thing, correct, with the help of deployment? So there are different strategy to do deployment. Either you can use blue green, you can use rolling update, but which is more preferred? If you have a heavy application, which needs a completely zero downtime kind of thing, you can use this blue green. But if your application can sustain a bit of uh, downtime, not surely, but bit of downtime, you can use this rolling update. So the answer will be, I would use Kubernetes rolling updates, a deployment strategy that gradually replaces old ports with new ones while ensuring the application remains available throughout the update process. By defining a readiness probe, readiness probe and liveness probe concept is also there to check whether your application ports are able to serve the traffic, whether they are they are having all kind of permissions or not. So that readiness probe and liveness probe, you can uh, ensure, uh, you can uh, introduce here to ensure that uh, your upgrade is smooth, correct? So in the deployment configuration, you can uh, introduce this readiness probe. It will automatically redirect traffic away from ports that are not ready. So if your port are not ready, it will not accept the traffic and it will redirect to somewhere or some else port, correct? So it minimizes your disruption to end users. Additionally, you would leverage features like blue-green deployment or can release for more advanced deployment strategy. So if your application can sustain a bit of downtime, you can use the rolling update. That's the standard practice kind of thing what we do. 
but if your application cannot sustain any kind of downtime you can go with the blue green which is more secured kind of thing moving forward towards the eighth question you are deploying a kubernetes application that requires persistent storage with different performance tiers how do you implement a storage class provisioning this is related to the same stateful set and it's also related to your persistent volume and pvc persistent volume claim so how will your answer will go i would define multiple storage classes in kubernetes such each corresponding to a different storage type ssd hdd or cloud based storage like nfs and dbs volumes that you can use each storage class would have different parameters such as volume type provisioner and access mode when deploying a pod that requires persistent storage i would specify the appropriate storage class in the pvc like whenever you are defining pvc that will claim the storage from your uh, pv uh, like that pv might have your 50 gb and pvc is looking for 5 gb kind of storage so whenever you will uh, uh, define this storage correct that pvc will uh, claim for you and it will uh, grant that kind of storage for your application which is running correct and it will dynamically provision the desired storage based on your application requirement that means whatever you are you are requesting correct so that storage will be provisioned and it will be available for your application to store the data moving towards second last question you need to secure access to your kubernetes cluster and resources describe your approach to kubernetes authorization authentication and authorization the same concept what we talked uh, a bit before so we can use the concept of rbac role based access control to control access to cluster resources based on user roles and permission so if i have to secure like for few users i have to give the read kind of permission so i will grant only read uh, role into my cluster if i have to give to few users the admin kind of privileges i will grant that particular role and i will uh, add those users in that particular role correct so with the with the user who have those admin kind of role like if i have five users and these five users are associated with the role which has admin kind of privileges so those five users will be, will only be available to get uh, will be authorized to get into the cluster and do any kind of modification those users which have read access they will not be able to perform any kind of write access write uh, activity on your kubernetes cluster so that way you can enforce granular access to control policy and restrict privileges to only what is necessary for each user or application correct additionally you can enable authentication mechanisms such as client certificate service account or external identity provider such as oidc which you can get into your eks eks cluster if you are deploying this aws eks that way you can do correct the last question you are tasked with monitoring and logging kubernetes cluster performance and health how will you do that so you can use kubernetes native monitoring and logging solutions such as prometheus grafana and fluentd by deploying monitoring clients such as kubernetes daemon set so when you deploy any kubernetes daemon set that ensures that all pod which are uh, populating across this daemon set will be distributed uh in a unique manner uh, sorry in a uniform manner that means each pod will get distributed to each and every node so if your next number of node is coming into the cl cluster this daemon set pod will be deployed on that node as well so it daemon set itself ensures that every node will have that particular pod which is deployed in the daemon set correct and this will scrap cluster sorry cluster matrix and logs we can gain insights into cluster performance resource utilization and application health additionally you can set up alerts and dashboards to proactively monitor and troubleshoot any issues that arise in the cluster so this way you can answer all these kind of scenario based interview questions while appearing for the devops interview or the cloud interview or the your platform engineer or for the sri site reliability engineer you can answer your scenario based questions in this way that will mark your interview from if you are on the number 4 you can go up to the 8 correct out of 10 So this is all I wanted to talk about in this particular video let's meet in the next video till the time enjoy the devops learning and subscribe and share the channel with your colleagues